forward, ladies and gentlemen, get ready for our first keynote speaker who will come here to talk about digital marketing techniques to acquire customers in Asia. So sit tight as I welcome Mr. Chris Wieners, Managing Partner, Hogo Digital. A very warm welcome to you, Chris. Hi, Kati. Thank you very much uh, for having me. It's a pleasure to be involved in the event today. And thank you to everyone uh, who's going to be listening in uh, this, this morning, this afternoon uh, in my conversation. So thank you so much. So today uh, I'm going to be speaking with you all about, uh, as Kati said, focused on digital marketing and techniques that we utilize uh, to acquire customers in Asia. Just a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been working in the gaming industry. Uh, I was previously working in Macau uh, with the Las Vegas Sands Corporation in land-based gaming. Uh, and I migrated and moved to the digital marketing side uh, back in 2011. And since then I've been working with various customers in the digital space, looking at, again, how to utilize digital channels uh, throughout Asia to again acquire customers and, and build their brand. So today, uh, it's going to be a short conversation. I have approximately 20 minutes or so to chat. So I'm going to really walk through some of the, some of the key areas that we find gaming operators, both uh, the pay to play online casino side of things, esports, social games, et cetera. Some of the key platforms uh, and channels in the digital space that we see them utilizing um, throughout, throughout Asia Pacific is sort of uh, what some of those mean in terms of uh, returns on investment and, and where some of the better advertising opportunities lie. So today I'm going to qu talk quickly through the difference uh, in regulated and unregulated markets as it relates to advertising in particular and, and how working in, in these different marketplaces does affect uh, you know, your abilities and the types of advertising that you are able to place into the market as well as the overall costs and some of the expectations on you know, player retention and, and return on investment. I'm going to talk about display media. So looking at how brands in the iGaming space utilize both programmatic advertising, uh, digital media buys, direct buys, retargeting, et cetera, and how those should be placed uh, to, to have the best possible return on investment and how we measure those. I'm gonna walk through social media as well. So talk a little bit about the platforms, but really more the use of social media in the world of iGaming uh, and e-gaming, esports, et cetera, and talk a little bit about uh, live stream marketing, uh, the different types of influencer marketing, VTubers, et cetera, that have really come up onto the scene, uh, you know, really over the past couple of years and are now sort of powerhouses uh, with regards to their ability to help build digital media uh, or digital gaming brands uh, online. And then I'll talk a bit about search uh, because I think that organic search marketing specifically for the AI gaming industry is a bit unique uh, and some of the some of the opportunities and some of the techniques that are utilized in organic search are are, are very particular. So each of these uh, categories or each of these channel types could be spoken about, you know, over very long periods of time. So I'm really only going to be able to touch on the surface uh, level of each of these uh, specific items. But I welcome you, of course, to please ask questions uh, or, you know, please, please be in touch should you have any further information or any questions that you need. Um, again, there's, we're going to go very surface level here um, over the, the time that we have. So I'm going to start by, you know, one of the things that may appear obvious, but when we've worked or when I've worked in the past with different iGaming brands, one of the most important things is to understand, of course, the market regulations. Now, Regulated versus unregulated markets. When we're referring to regulated markets, uh, we're referring to those which allow some level of eye gaming. Um, and again, I, it could be eye gaming, it could be esports, we could be talking about social games. Each of these falls into its own unique category. And markets where those are regulated uh, generally will have very well documented regulations and rules around how that advertising is going to work, how it can be placed where it can be placed and the types of advertising you can run. Generally, you'll have very clear requirements from some of the premium sort of industry advertising networks. So Google, Yahoo, those types of programmatic advertising platforms, they'll have very straightforward and clear requirements for iGaming operators to fulfill in order to operate and run advertising in those markets. 
The nice thing about those regulated markets is it gives us the ability to directly promote our pay to play platforms. So very straightforward, iGaming, uh, lottery, uh, sports betting, any platform or excuse me, any brand that is offering a very straightforward pay to play model can then be directly promoted uh, and in, in those markets. Strong influencer marketing opportunities. So in regulated markets, influencers are very generally very clear on what they're able to do or not do, what they can talk about, uh, what will allow them to maintain monetization on their end. So on platforms like YouTube, uh, you look at platforms like Twitch, uh, which are, which are you know, again, starting to really have, have significant influence in, in the iGaming world. Uh, it's important, again, in regulated markets to know that you're going to have, we're working with influencers that are very clear on what their capabilities are in terms of what they can say, uh, what they can do, and really how they can, how they can promote your, platform, your gaming platform. Uh, the last point for regulated markets is really important, and it sort of ties in with the third point about the ability to promote the pay-to-play platforms, and that is that tracking return on investment is much easier. So basically, if we're able to um, run advertising directly to pay-to-play platforms, this means that we can track direct registrations, we can track first-time deposits, if we're talking about iGaming in particular, uh, and everything that is done from an advertising perspective is then optimized based on the goals or the KPIs that the, that the platform is set. So again, if those are registrations, if those are FTDs, whatever those are, uh, financial, uh, or registration based, they can be easily tracked and then the advertising can then be uh, optimized based on those goals. If we look at unregulated markets, the problem that we have, uh, which unfortunately for better or worse is, is a very significant portion of Asia Pacific, is uh, limited or no documentation. And this is more the legality around iGaming. Uh, you know, there are some markets where it is very straightforward. Uh, some markets, um, I physically at the moment, I'm sitting in Japan in a place where it's quite, uh, it's a bit opaque uh, with regards to what can and can't be done in the world of iGaming. So it does, uh, it does, it does uh, muddy the waters a little bit with regards to what is, a, what is actually uh, able to be advertised. Generally, the premium networks are so going back to the Googles, Yahoo's, the big, the big advertising platforms that exist uh, will not allow you to run um, ads in these non-regulated markets, or they will be incredibly strict with regards to what you can or cannot do. So for again, if I use uh, this market as an example, uh, the only way that you can run an ad in Japan, for example, would be you'd have to be a, uh, a licensed operator of say boat racing or horse racing, uh, which, is, which is legal to be promoted here online. So again, you have generally uh, the majority of the major players would not be, uh, or major brands I should say, would not allow you to run advertising on their platform in these sort of unregulated markets. In that case, uh, you might be required to promote your free to play platforms. Um, and I say risky because you know, with free to play, uh, there is always going to be additional cost to then generate conversion to your pay to play platform if that's where you ultimately want to drive customers to. Uh, but that is a requirement in many cases to be able to operate freely in these unregulated markets. In the influencer world, there's a lot of confusion because Influencers, just like the advertisers, are not necessarily sure what they can and can't do. Um, so that then becomes more difficult and more time consuming uh, to negotiate and discuss with individual influencers. And then again, if we compare the ROI ability to track, uh, now you're tracking things like free play registrations or brand awareness, um, which means that now you've got additional costs, as I mentioned, to, to convert players to the pay to play model if you're, if you're looking at iGaming in particular. Again, if you're looking at things like social games uh, or, or e-gaming, where you're not necessarily looking at a, a pay-to-play or casino-style product, um, then those, those rules might be more relaxed. But if we're talking about specifically e-gaming and casinos, um, you can actually see here, I've pasted, uh, I won't go through this in detail because of the time, but these are just some, for example, of Google's definitions of different types of casino or gaming-related content bits and how they treat each of those with regards to the ability to advertise. And then within each country, Google has its own individual uh, rules and regulations, as does Yahoo, as does Facebook, as do all of the major uh, operating platforms. So I'm gonna jump into display media. So when we talk about display media, there's sort of three key areas. Um, I'm talking about programmatic solutions, 
direct buy, and then of course online affiliates, which are which are going to be key. So programmatic solutions uh, primarily ad platforms, so such as Google, Yahoo, etc. And what they do is they allow uh, for pixel-based tracking and targeting. So when we when you run ads in a particular market, so again we're we're, we're in a regulated market because we're running ads with one of these guys. Uh, we're going to be able to target very specific, uh, very specific audiences based on the players that we're trying to acquire. And what it means is we can retarget to these audiences based on behavior or based on things that they do. So, for example, if we want to optimize based on registrations um, to a particular iGaming platform, uh, what we can do is, is when, we, when, we, when we install tracking pixels through these programmatic solutions, we're basically able to say, okay, we're going to run on these various networks uh, based on the targeting, you know, the age, the gender, the likes, the other types of brands these people are interested in, basically drilling that audience down very specifically. And then we'll be able to see where those registrations are coming from or where those first time deposits, those FTDs are coming from. And then we'll be able to optimize and spend our advertising dollars more on the solutions which are driving those return on investment. The downside, of course, as I mentioned previously with programmatic solutions is that they're often very limited, especially in, in Asia Pacific with regards to uh, the requirements for licensing uh, in each target market or pri uh, prior approval by the platform. So again, Google, Yahoo, Facebook all require uh, pre-approval to run any of these types of solutions if you're offering a pay to play product. If you're offering something which is more along the lines of esports uh, or along the lines of social games, much more liberal in terms of the requirements uh, and much more open in terms of the requirements to promote an application or a platform which has uh, registration to something that is not considered casino gaming. So it varies greatly based on whether or not we're talking about casino gaming, uh, even social games, uh, for example, here. You see this area it says social casino games in the bottom right hand corner of the slide. So these are games where there is no pay to play. Uh, there's no casino element. However, the games promoted are of a casino fashion. So again, depending on the type of game that you're offering, programmatic solutions uh, will be very uh, will vary greatly based on the requirements. Now, direct buy solutions, in my experience, uh, are primarily where a lot of operators of online gaming and iGaming go. Uh, when it comes to focus, focusing on uh, players in Asia, in addition to affiliates, which I'll talk about. So direct buy is basically very straightforward. It's, it's negotiation with third party platforms that are operating in both regulated and unregulated markets. So in some cases, we don't have the targeting abilities or the optimization opportunities. Um, however, we're talking about very specifically targeted audiences. So these are unique networks. So for example, websites that may target, uh, you know, uh, sports, sports betting enthusiasts or websites that target lottery enthusiasts or poker enthusiasts or general gaming enthusiasts um, outside of the affiliate world. Uh, and in, in these cases, oftentimes you're negotiating directly with them for a flat buy. So you're not necessarily paying a cost per click or, a, you know, a, something that's more traditional that you might pay for over here in programmatic. You're going to be negotiating flat rates. So. I guess the bottom line with direct buy is that there are more opportunities. Um, a lot of direct buy networks as well. I have here sort of, a, I, I, we call it high risk or adult networks. So all that means is they're networks that really focus on the gaming industry, um, alcohol, tobacco, et cetera. So those networks do exist and they do allow you to run advertising in a variety of markets. And oftentimes, uh, although a little bit more expensive than standard programmatic, they are incredibly successful at uh, finding very targeted audiences based on, again, based on the types of websites that they, that they represent. So in our case, we see a lot of the iGaming companies that are entering, you know, the Asia Pacific market, specifically some of those which have operated in other markets throughout the world, uh, moving to these sort of direct buy solutions that exist uh, in, in, in virtually every, every country throughout Asia Pacific. Ultimately, affiliate solutions are, are key uh, for any op for any operator who's looking to enter the market. You know, this is very specific to to the iGaming gaming world, but you know, for those that are entering new markets, uh, we oftentimes recommend people to work. You know, to start working in the affiliate world. So, you know, various affiliates uh, in in all the markets in every language exist um, in a variety of, of of shapes and formats with different you know revenue plans and and, and negotiation tactics. So. 
when getting involved in affiliates, uh, you know, it, it's really important to ensure that you've got, you know, the local market knowledge or somebody on the ground to help um, to help you basically with the expertise to, to partner with valid and, and legitimate affiliate operators um, in the market. So again, affiliates range greatly from the types of customers they target. Uh, you know, if you're looking at you have e-games or live dealers, sports betting, lottery, poker, et cetera. Um, all of these different types of gaming formats are, are represented by various affiliates in every market that exists here. So affiliate solutions are the easiest and probably the, the fastest and one of the most important ways to enter the market uh, when launching a specific product. However, these other solutions, um, working backwards, direct buy is incredibly important and incredibly profitable with regards to the ability to drive customers and programmatic, um, the most difficult uh, because of the regulatory requirements, but also very, very important. I've included a link here. I won't review this, but this is again, just uh, for it, Google in particular, uh, if you go to their support page, you can actually view every single market that exists, every country, and you can read these specific requirements based on the type of platform that you represent. So again, whether you're an iGaming online casino, you're an esports operator, you're a social gaming operator, a uh, social gaming platform operator, there are a variety of policies based on your uh, business type and the market that you wish to enter. Uh, and it's actually incredibly clear how to apply and how to work with, in this case, Google, uh, the same, the same uh, rules and regulations exist for different platforms. As I mentioned, Yahoo, Facebook, et cetera, also have very similar uh, rules and regulations. Social media. Um, so, you know, social media in terms of the platforms, you know, the three key areas that we break it down into, um, we look at, you know, the usual suspects. So I'm referring to your common social media platforms, your Facebooks, your Instagrams, et cetera, uh, blogs and affiliates that exist out in the market. As I mentioned, there are a variety of those and influencer marketing, which I'll spend a little bit more time talking about here. I think what's important to talk about with social media when iGaming companies go to enter, um, specifically iGaming, where we see success for iGaming and social media is when it is not used as a platform to simply promote the product or the brand. So what does that mean? That means creating and focusing on a community relevant to your offering. So for example, some, some things that I've seen in the past that have worked very well, sites that are offering digital lottery uh, products. So instead of promoting their digital lottery, they are specifically focused on creating a network, uh, a news platform where they have various uh, announcements about global jackpots in the, in the markets they operate, uh, announcing winners and basically lottery news and information. And their goal on Facebook in this particular case is simply to grow a large scale database of users who are interested in following lottery related content. And that works out very well in the sense that they basically develop this massive database uh, of which of, of lottery enthusiasts uh, of which they can then market to later upon reaching some level of, of critical mass. The same goes for esports. or sorry for sports book, excuse me. The same goes for sports book. Again, I've seen sites, websites, social media sites, uh, pages that focus on specific sports stats. Um, and again, the whole goal there is really in market to develop uh, in market in language, of course to develop a community um, of followers who are, are interested in, in the particular uh, offering that you're ultimately going to be pushing to them. So as I said, developing a critical mass before you attempt to hard sell a particular offering, iGaming offering. And then very important, similar to the programmatic side, really making sure you understand the content guidelines by region and by platform, uh, because you know, we've seen companies that have spent a lot of time and money building a community only to then try and run ads to have their, their page blocked or banned by Facebook um, or Instagram or any other social platform. And that is catastrophic. And very often it is, is more, more often than not, it's very difficult to reverse those decisions by the platform operators. So very important to be mindful of that when you're looking at social media. Um, one of the questions that we get asked a lot is how much do influencers cost? And you know, this is a, how long is a piece of string conversation. Um, there are various answers to that, various answers to that based on the markets, uh, based on the platforms. Um, you know, we see the majority of influencers um, on, on two or three key platforms, depending on the markets. TikTok um, is, is one for uh, social media, but also YouTubers, 
um, and VTubers, which exist on YouTube as well as you know, platforms like Twitch, uh, which have grown exponentially. And you know, this number is by no means indicative, but I, people, it's one of the top questions we get asked uh, when people try and enter the social media market or the influencer market, what do I have to spend? Again, I have here some very indicative numbers. This is what we see generally in the Asia Pacific marketplace. Again, it varies greatly, but it just gives you an idea of the types of investments that iGaming operators uh, need to make when, when looking at this. The final piece I'm going to touch, and I've got, I've got about a minute or two left here, um, is, is search marketing. Uh, and I'm specifically referring to SEO, so increasing your page ranking um, on, on key search platforms uh, in market. So, you know, what I have here is really just some, you know, really, again, high level, you could talk about SEO for hours, but really some high level uh, items. Um, and, you know, here we look at, you know, any company, whether they're doing it direct or working with an agency, irregardless, uh, utilizing really strong third party tools to drive your SEO strategy. So it's very hard to do this. Um, you know, when I say on your own, you can do it as your own brand, but utilizing some tools that exist out there that will help cut through a lot of the work um, and help make your work uh, much easier and, and identify the low hanging fruit for you. Um, understanding metrics across the competition. So not only your own competition, but global best practice sites and using platforms to understand, you know, what are they doing? How are they targeting, uh, you know, specific search terms? What types of websites are they linking to? All these things that matter. And I know that some of this is a bit generic to SEO in general, but it is incredibly important if you want to overall increase your, you know, your, your, your search ranking and ultimately decrease your reliance on paid advertising, which is the ultimate goal of SEO. Uh, of course, in market in language research, understanding link back opportunities so not only affiliates um, you know a lot of people in the iGaming world we see them focused primarily on affiliate marketing when it comes to seo and uh you know that's it's affiliates are important but understanding the other opportunities that exist in market to link back to or link back from excuse me is very key again understanding the competitors keyword ranking in by market and by language to develop your your strategy around seo and ultimately ROI forecasting. So if your goal is first time deposits or your goal is registrations and you have a value for those registrations, you should work on platforms that can run scenarios where you can say, okay, if we increase the word, uh, you know, uh, online sports book in, in, in the Indian market in English by two points or by two spaces uh, or uh, two points on, on a particular search engine, what does that mean to our bottom line? What, will, what, what simulation will we see with regards to increases in registrations and, and, and uh, returns on investment in terms of deposits? All of these things are doable using third-party tools and it's, it's important to integrate that into your overall strategy. So again, I, I went very quick and very high level today um, and I just ran over time. So I just very quickly as a summary, you know, looking at the key things here, understanding the difference between the two, the regulated and, uh, and unregulated markets, opportunities and regulations there. Social media, creating a community that's relevant to your products. You can create an amazing database of leads um, and then utilizing influencers to showcase your platform to the masses. Running display media and advertising that is optimized specifically for your goals. So conversions um, or first time deposits. And remember that you can look at those traditional, non-traditional networks, which we consider high risk. Uh, we call them high risk, but really related to uh, the gaming industry. And again, really focus on the SEO side of things uh, to overall decrease your reliance on paid advertising and, um, and focus more on your organic content. So I apologize, I've run a little bit over, but I think I will ask, I'm back to uh, Katie. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I know 20 minutes is really short time to explain <laughs> what digital marketing can do for gaming industry. But thank you for being uh, so sporting and uh, giving us an overview on what all main points that we need to take care of while thinking of uh, digital marketing for online gaming. So thank you, Chris, for your time and for being here present at the Game On First edition. We would hope to see you again next year. Absolutely. It's my, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chris.